Tiny Giants is a giant screen film that explores uh, the world in miniature. It's a journey to a world that we really see, a journey beneath our feet. And it's a world governed by different laws of time and physics, where a falling acorn is like a, a meteor, a gust of wind is more like a tornado. And to survive down there, you almost have to have superpowers. And our story follows two tiny characters, a young grasshopper mouse, a young chipmunk. It's staged in America, the continent of the US, one on the, uh, uh, in the burning deserts of, of, the, of the Wild West, and the other, the, the frozen woodlands of the, of the far north. And uh, we follow two, two characters as they're forced to grow up fast in the world of giants. Hidden Kingdoms was a three-part television series. It, uh, it gave us a grand overview and, and it gave us a wonderful mix and variety of all the little creatures you find around the world carved up into six little story, miniature stories. Hidden uh, Tiny Giants, we always felt, because we uh, our shooting style is one where we wanted to immerse the audiences in the world of the, of the little characters, it lended itself perfectly to, to, to 3D, which by virtue of shooting wide-angle lens uh, is all about getting the audience closer to their subjects. So we felt there was a natural uh, synergy between uh, our shooting style uh, 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 and, and, and 3D. In terms of why would it make a, a, um, a satisfying standalone film, we, we identified that uh, by combining two stories from the American continent, one in the far north, in the, in the frozen woodlands, one in the burning deserts uh, of, of the wild west, by combining those two storylines together, it would make a very satisfying standalone 40 minutes for the giant screen. I'm equally proud of, of, the, of the TV series um, uh, uh, as well as the, the tiny giants, the giant screen. But I think it's true to say the 3D and the theatre experience lends itself more naturally to a uh, dramatised natural history. The audiences, particularly in the UK, the, uh, are, are very used to a set of clear rules when they see a BBC natural history landmark series. When you, although you overtly signpost it, where you enter into a hybrid between uh, uh, blue chip and drama, there's a danger the audience can get confused where they are, what they're watching. Is it real? Isn't it real? And I think we slightly suffered from that with, with the TV series. When you get into, into the theatre, the audiences are much more accepting um, of, of, of drama. They're used to watching uh, uh, feature film dramas more so than documentaries in, in the theatre space. So I, I think they're much more comfortable with a more dramatised uh, uh, um, approach to storytelling. But they do also understand, and this is very important, that although it may have elements of drama, it's all based and underpinned by rigorous science. Scripting is obviously the scripting approach is, is, is key to uh, signposting, eliciting emotion, giving enough information that the audiences feel that they're learning something, but also to heighten the tension of the drama. And I think the, 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 script, the challenge with the script for, for Tiny Giants was to um, deliver both factual content, but to really ratchet up the drama and give people a greater uh, appreciation and admiration for these heroic little creatures so it was really fun to write and we went to great efforts to make people care and identify with our little characters as much as is acceptable um, whilst also giving important information as to the, the challenges they face and we never tell people what they're seeing but we always uh, try and, and, and heighten the drama through, through careful uh, scripting. Directing in 3D, is, it's a huge challenge. You have to almost start again, not exclusively, but you have to uh, consider every part of the process, the extra dimension, uh, particularly when, when it comes to, to, to directing. 
if you're going to get the very best depth out of out of an individual frame, you have to have completely different elements within the the body of the shot, and completely uh, uh, rethink the classic composition that you do in 2D to make a satisfying composition in, in the third dimension. So you have to learn uh, this whole new discipline. There are also very strict rules about how you shoot in 3D. If you don't adhere to those rules, you can make very uh, um, either uh, uh, uncomfortable 3D or um, the shot just cannot work. Um, to give you an example, if you're filming a mid shot with a, an infinite background, by the laws of 3D that won't actually uh, work. You can't frame uh, in that way because of the, the amount of depth in the, in the, in the film would be too great. So you actually have to break down each shot, work out how it would work in the 3D space and, and recompose for them. The use of 3D uh, from, let's say, 10 years ago ha has moved rapidly on post uh, Life of Pi and, and Gravity. Uh, it's a very sophisticated tool now that can elicit all sorts of emotion and, and um, create all sorts of atmospheres far beyond the, the pointy stick out of the screen moments. So we actually create a, uh, a, a 3D script, a depth script that sits alongside our storyboards that um, that paints the, the 3D journey throughout the film with its peaks and troughs. If you have too much consistent 3D, the, the, eye, the eye quickly acclimatizes and you no longer actually register that it's a 3D film. So you actually have to chop and change, but very carefully work out why you want your various varying degrees of 3D at any given time, because it conveys different emotions. And so I think it's, the journey as a, as a director, as a novice director in 3D, is to understand the potency of 3D and how it can emotionally sway the audience. I think, um, as a whole, my attitude to 3D was one of, let's make a statement here. I don't believe it's worth entering into the 3D arena unless you're going to go for it. Audiences pay premium prices to see 3D uh, in the theatre and if you don't give them a bang for their buck they'll just say what's the point it feels like a 2D mo uh, a movie so overall I wanted to make a strong strong 3D film in terms of where to place it and why that comes with the uh, the narrative and emotional uh, journey you want to, to create the the the, um, the introduction to the film is very 3D heavy with the falling acorns. Uh, um, the acorns actually bounce out into theatre space. Um, was very keen to grab the audience's attention from the word go. Um, the river scene, the river flooding scene where the mouse is is, is being chased by the um, the flash flood. Again, very heavy on 3D to give the audience a real uh, experience of what it's like to be a mouse faced by a tsunami. We always wanted to make a real life Pixar movie. The wonderful thing, let's say, uh, with a film like Bugs Life, was that you saw the world from an ant's point of view. And although that is pure fiction, the actual visualization of its real world was quite extraordinary um, and it was quite true to life. Um, it enabled you to see the world with infinite depths of field as an ant would see it, uh, enabled uh, a forest of grass to look like a jungle and so the, uh, that, that helped inspire the visual approach to hidden. Uh, to, to, so that helped inspire the visual approach to Tiny Giants to try and see if we could re properly recreate the world from, a, from a, uh, a, a small creature's point of view. So give the audience the experience of what it's like to live in a world when you're only six inches tall. So that was the visual style, but there's so much more. Uh, there's obviously a lot more that goes into a film than, than the visuals. There's the whole the music. The, the, the narration and the sound effects. And so the music approach was very playful. It, it kind of mirrored the, uh, the sense of, of uh, fun, 
drama uh, and, and madness of, of, let's say, a Pixar film without being overly Hollywood. So I think that the, 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 the musical uh, score was, was key to creating uh, this kind of uh, tone uh, along with Stephen Fry's uh, commentary. And the highly exaggerated, but based on real life sounds, sound design. The sound design was, was, was key to creating this sort of cartoonish but, but real, real life uh, uh, effect. Most of the sounds you hear are, are real, but admittedly, and, and, and I think they added to it, we have the odd screeching of tyres, um, we have our, a howling mouse, which is based on real sound, but slightly amp shifted, frequency shifted so that we can actually hear it. So, in what was what was fun about Hidden Kingdoms was not only do we visualize the world in miniature, but we also visualize how the world sounds like to a small creature. Tiny Giants has just been released in Chicago, uh, in the US, and um, it's going down a storm, so I hear, and it's uh, been brought up by a host of other distributors, so it's gonna be um, shown in Japan shortly uh, and, and across America. And, uh, and, in, and I imagine it'll be in China and most of the other territories within the year.